Hey everyone, so I want to go ahead and piggyback over the last video we did showcasing, you know, some of the things that we probably couldn't show you in our first building your own home gym, you know, setup. So earlier it's setting up your own home gym. And I want to piggyback off three key things that I just couldn't show in the last video. But yes, this is our home gym. I'll do a quick once over, you know, when we're done so you can really see everything that we've done. So right through here, this is the various, the difference where I was talking about a squat stand. This right here is a freestanding squat stand. This is not mounted or bolted into anything. These are great for space saving options. They're incredibly mobile. So you can take this and move it into another part of the garage or even move it outside if the weather's nice. So yeah, and if you do that, you will be that CrossFit guys. So just accept that's gonna happen. But here's the big difference. With it not being uh, bolted into the ground or bolted into the wall, it will move. So this is what we talked about, about you're gonna have to lower a barbell into the rack versus against the rack. Um, but if you're very comfortable with the barbell, truthfully guys, it really won't be a big deal whatsoever. Now this one, as we scroll up right through here, is this. This is our wall mounted pull up bar. This one we picked off of Amazon. It's got multiple grips on through here. So we picked this on Amazon for, I think it was about 120 bucks we picked this one up at. So we ended up bolting this into the wall. We had to use a couple of what we call headers or just really extra boards for it to bolt into. And the reason why is, let me explain, it's gonna turn the camera around to explain this one, is what you're gonna notice is if you do that, not, oh, that lighting is amazing. There we go, that we can actually see my face a little bit. What you're gonna notice is if you get a pull-up bar that is a different width, then the studs in your wall. This is when you're gonna have to do this right through here and add in what we call a header or just a basic board to go across. This way, what you're seeing here, these bolt marks that you're looking through here, these are mounted into the stud. So you can take a look, we've got this thing laid across three different studs. Then we have the pull-up bar mounted into the board. This is good for additional support. So if you're uncomfortable with that, you can probably get a handyman anywhere to do this. It's not too hard. Not too, it's really not that bad, guys, once you just kind of realize where the studs are. But again, if you're uncomfortable about that, you can definitely get a friend, a neighbor, anyone, you know, to help out with this. But as you see here, we do have our jungle gyms, as we talked about, attached to the pull-up bar. So this is the other option. Now, there are some that you can mount directly to the ceiling. Again, guys, there's many options in this one. But uh, we went a little bit more overboard with maybe this one. But again, about 120 bucks was not too bad for considering everything we can do with it. Attaching bands, the jungle gyms, and our, of course, other various exercises. Now, here's the final thing. Remember we talked about having some kind of anchor, which you're looking at right through here, for your bands, which we have our bands right through here, to attach to. We demonstrated that you could use a handicap railing that you picked up from Lowe's, Home Depot, anything of this nature, but instead, just kind of keeping with our barnwood theme, you know, I went for basic industrial piping. Just take, took a 24 inch pipe, did elbows against it, mounted it into the stud into a wall, and this thing is not going anywhere. It's very sturdy, very, you know, if you just want it to look a little different. But this right through here is how we would mount our bands right into it. All right, so with the big three, Squat stand, pull up bar, a wall mount for your bands. Now the final thing many people don't really think about through here is going to be this, a fan. If you are in a garage, I will be honest, spend the money on a fan. It will make a difference. Of course, this is OEM tools. Again, I picked this one on Amazon. In fact, I have four of these in my studio now because they move so much air and they're really for a fan of this size, I think this is a 24 inch fan, it's actually very quiet for a fan of this size and it pumps out a lot of air. Now we did go with this one, it's about a, I don't know, 16, 18 inch fan. And I'll tell you right now, it looks good, but it matches well with everything we got through here, but it doesn't move a damn bit of air. You couldn't even tell if it was on or off. Just go forward, just spend a couple bucks pick up the span, it'll make your life easier. So those are the big things we want to chat about. Now, of course, just a quick once over with the stuff that we have in here. Of course, a bench. We have our bell, barbell. And in fact, the squat stand I picked up from Rogue Fitness. I just love their stuff. Now, the bench and the barbell we picked up from Rep Fitness. 
those people were asking that, hey, is a rep fitness barbell good? I like it a lot. I actually thought about using a few of these in my studio because I like them so much. And for cost-wise, for a good quality barbell, well worth it. Next, we have, of course, our vans. And, of course, you saw the Jungle Gym. Now, something else a lot of people don't think about is this right through here. This is chalk. This is basic chalk. Then this is a rock climbing chalk bag. And we have what's called bison chalk. You see that chalk suck in there. So what you do is you take your hand, put it in the chalk bag, get it in there, and you got a basically a good amount of chalk. You won't need much on this one. Now I use a rock climbing, a rock climbing. Gosh, say that fast. A rock climbing chalk bag because it is not as dusty as a freestanding chalk unit. Or if you see those guys carrying those Tupperware boxes of chalk, use this. Very easy thing. I think overall this is like fifteen bucks for everything. The chalk and the bag. Next, of course, we have the plates we talked about down through here. I prefer bumper plates, but hey, you get what you can find. Now, we have dumbbells. Um, now, I've collected these over the years, but in fact, I looked on Facebook Marketplace and I saw a person selling a set of dumbbells of fives to 45, which is a great setup. He was selling it for about 150 bucks. So, you can find them pretty cheap, but most cases for beginners, 15s, 20s, and 25s, will be more than enough. Now, of course, we have 40s, we have 45s, and 50s going through there, even a few rubber ones that you can maybe see at the bottom. I don't know how the camera quality is on that one. A few other little knickknacks. Ab wheel, ab mat, kettlebell, and a rumble roller. Here's the difference between a rumble roller, which is dusty, and a foam roller. If you take a look, foam roller, great thing to have. It's a must in everyone, I should say. The rumble roller is different than the fact that it's stiffer. And, of course, these little knobs that you find here can pretty much get some little nooks and crannies that maybe this one can't get to. I would recommend this. These things are about, I don't know, this one will be pretty close, about 25% more than a typical foam roller. But try it first before you spend the money because some people swear by them, others they can't tell the difference. So try it before you spend the money on this one. I believe this one, I think, was maybe $35 for that. So, again, kind of giving you some idea. The next one we do have through here is a basic clock. I'm telling you guys, you really don't need it. You truly don't unless you're doing a ton of circuit work and you really get involved in that world. Um, again, this one was off Amazon. This thing was $100 for here. And finally, everyone's big thing is, yes, there is the infamous Peloton. This is the most used piece of equipment in here, I'll be honest, that Brandy has. And then, of course, we have our concept rower, which for me, I'm a row guy. I am not a bike guy. So this is our basic garage gym. It is, in my opinion, pretty well outfitted for very much anything that you just about need exercise-wise. Of course, you can add more to it. And at the same time, you don't need anything we do have. Guys, fitness is our life, and we kind of go maybe go a little bit overboard in some cases. But I hope this video helps you out, and if you got any comments or questions, hey, feel free to email us, and we'll be more than happy to answer any way, shape, form we can.